Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel Karibu Fine Art and I'm Priya, the artist behind karibufineart.com. That's my website. Please go and check it out and also check out my Instagram, Facebook and Twitter page. The links are below in the description. Today we are going to learn how to paint this oil or acrylic surreal scene which has got the beautiful wallpaper with the stencils, uh, the wooden or you can say metal frame. Uh, whatever you think and the beautiful birds and the waterfall up this canvas from Eckersley Art Studio which is the local art studio uh, art store in Melbourne city uh, and this is just made up of eight ounce uh, cotton duck canvas so you can see in the back of it is just basic cotton which is really high quality very super smooth cotton which uh, the, which can give you really smooth surface to paint on for very fine details and for some good effects so I have picked it from Eckersley Art Studio and you can um, get it customly made for you from any of the close by uh, art stores you have. Um, what I have done to start with is uh, I have used this stencil. Uh, this is from, uh, uh, I have got this from eBay. So I have used this stencil. I will put the details in the description below for the cotton canvas and the stencil I have used. And I have taped uh, down here for the frame portion so that none of the colors uh, go um, like none of the colors I apply using this uh, liquid spray paint on that portion and I have also covered I had also covered this portion completely so I only kept this portion um, ready for me to do the spray painting on so first of all I applied a layer of black gesso on this border um, I used this black mate, Monte Mate gesso and after that layer dried, I used this stencil and this white spray paint and sprayed over all of this section. It's quite tricky. I usually do it outside in a balcony or outside area because you need enough air uh, because it's pretty harmful stuff. And I also use a mask when I apply it. And that's why it makes uh, very difficult for me to shoot it when I'm doing that thing. And once that was dry and everything was done, I... Um, uh, removed uh, sorry I removed this section I removed the um, uh, masking I had done on this section so I had just put a paper on it actually and taped it all together so I removed that paper and I start, started working on the uh, landscape and that's where we'll start uh, today's tutorial from guys and the brushes I have used the paints uh, the acrylic paints I have used are liquid x basics acrylic paints and the brushes I have used is a filbert brush a round brush a lot of brushes for fine details which I have already discussed in all my previous videos and I'll be mentioning them uh, throughout the video as well throughout the tutorial as well and I have put details to all of those brushes in the description below so please go and check it out and if you have any other questions or concerns regarding any other details which I'm missing here please comment uh, below and please give me your feedback because that's what will keep me uh, encouraged and inspired to produce more and more such uh, complicated uh, painting tutorials uh, for you uh, with step by step uh, my voiceover. So uh, please do subscribe, it's completely for free and let's get back to the tutorial now. So the canvas looked exactly like this after I put in the wallpaper section uh, in black and white. It didn't give me the exact results I wanted uh, with the spray paint but I knew that I can modify it uh, accordingly in some time. So I just uh, didn't care about that portion and started with the landscape I have to put together first. So uh, I started with some of the drawing some of the tree trunks painting some of the tree trunks using the liquid x basics paints um, throughout this painting today's uh, part one uh, tutorial we will be using just the liquid x basics uh, acrylic paints uh, and from next week we'll start using oil paints winsor and newton and art spectrum oil paints 
um, so for this week uh, what we will be uh, having as an end result is the complete design will be blocked in and all the objects will be blocked in uh, on the canvas and uh, so there won't be any more uh, new objects added uh, after for the next part for the next part we'll be just adding a lot of new layers with oil and uh, to make it more vibrant like it looks uh, in the initial picture uh, which shows you the end result so uh, to design this one um, this whole picture I had a lot of different ideas in mind and uh, I just came with this one because I actually really liked one of the frames which uh, I saw online um, and I just wanted to draw uh, a, a paint a wooden frame or a metal frame uh, as a still object and I wanted to take it as a case study to learn something new for myself because I have painted a lot of still objects before but I had never painted a wooden frame or metallic frame Actually the end result I got, uh, the frame was looking more of a metallic uh, frame than wooden. But it doesn't matter, it looks beautiful anyhow. And you can achieve those results just by layering and nothing else. Because with the landscaping, uh, the rules are different. And for the still object, the rules are different. For animals, the rules are different when you paint something. Uh, so right now we are going through the landscape part and you can see how roughly I'm blocking in all the sections. I'm not being very particular about actually anything. I'm just trying to uh, use any green, darker green shades of color I can pick from the Liquitex Basics acrylic paints. And I have just used one brush uh, till now for most of the part. It's a basic number three uh, round brush. And I have been trying to block everything with that brush and there is another filbert brush which is the papillon uh, artist club filbert brush which we have discussed in our previous videos all of these uh, tools i have used i'll put the um, details in the video description as well as the links where you can find all of those tools so now uh, i'm just because i didn't like the wallpaper portion i am trying to uh, because it has dried completely so I'm just trying to glaze that portion so glazing is basically thinning down your acrylic paint uh, with a lot of water and just choosing you can pick any paint uh, the whole theme is goldenish brownish theme so I just picked uh, um, I think I have picked uh, burnt sienna and I just picked burnt sienna added a lot of water in it and then applied it all across that wallpaper section uh, with the oils it's the same, uh, for oil you have to use a medium or you have to use paint thinner uh, to thin it down and do the glazing with it. Uh, in this case because it's acrylic you can just add a lot of water and do the glazing. Uh, now I have moved down to my favorite section of this painting which for which actually I started doing this painting and I got inspired to do something new uh, and learn something new. So what I have uh, done at first is once I blocked in that wallpaper section and the uh, landscape I have uh, removed the uh, tape I have put for the frame section so that the frame section is clear white for me so I removed the tape um, and I have blocked in the basic sketch a rough sketch of uh, the frame after I'm blocking the rough sketch I am now just defining the dark portions where the shadows are in the reference picture and the light portions where the shadow where the portions are lighter uh, so which is actually the easiest way to describe it is you just paint what you see uh, it it's uh, it, it is easy to say than to do but uh, it needs practice so once you do this a lot of times when you try once you try to paint still life a lot of time you can consider this as a still life because this is made up of wood or a metal uh, so um, you just have to make sure your uh, shadows are very well defined and then your highlights are very well defined at the end if these two things are done properly in between even if your shade goes a little bit wrong here and there it doesn't matter that much because for the still life um, it ha has a kind of shine what still life objects usually you do are um, 
it can be any of the objects made up of plastic metal wood um, or any other material uh, for that you have a particular kind of shadow uh, depends on where the light source is and then you have highlights again depends on where exactly the light source is so depending on that uh, i'm just trying to define the dark portions better using this acrylic paint i'm using masked black paint on most of the sections and uh, the first layers i'll do with acrylic will be just in black and white because it is sometimes uh, it just sometimes looks a little bit more intricate than it actually is and because i was just trying this for the first time i went with black and white first and then i decided to do glazings later uh, to make it brown or goldenish in color uh, as a final result so you'll see how i'm doing the layering um, eventually and how i come down to that so you could see there are multiple layers of uh, gray shade so from it ranges from black to white so the highlights are very very white opaque white and the shadows are extremely dark black and in between you have these different shades of gray which uh, i have had put there before uh, after as i start putting highlights on um, i can see how drastically 3d it looks it looks like the the whole frame is coming out of the canvas it looks really ma it, it is and it is a magical experience altogether to paint paint uh, still objects because it takes time for landscape or seascape to come to life or it takes time for also animal uh, paintings or sketches to come to life but it's pretty easy for a uh, still uh, life object to come to life because once you define your darks and uh, highlights that's it that's it. that's it you're done for it so um, the main focus i have with this still life uh, for this frame is again and again it's just the shadows and the highlights so i know i'm like saying it a lot of times but that's that's it that's the most important part for your still life to paint your still life once that layer completely dries i'm going over with the with my glazing uh, with the same uh, uh, same paint i have used for the wallpaper which is uh, the burnt sienna uh, color i have used which is from liquitex basics acrylic paints which are really cheap um, in price but very good quality paints for doing something some piece like this we have already discussed the uh, canvas quality and what kind of canvas i'm using but i'm just reiterating again uh, that for still life this kind of canvas works best the best and i think it is not very difficult to find this kind of canvas even though i'm using it for the first time uh, if you find if you go to your local art store and give them the specific uh, description that this kind of um, canvas you want with this kind of uh, cotton on it uh, they will definitely custom make it for you custom custom make it for you and it might be a little bit expensive but it can produce great results so after blocking in the wallpaper then the landscape and the frame portion uh, i have drawn now this basic sketch of uh, uh, the bark, uh, the branch on which the my birds will be set, sitting. So, for the whole this creation of whole uh, painting, uh, there are only two real reference pictures which are copyright free. I have used everything else is almost taken from everywhere. Like um, the the landscape actually has been inspired from one of Kevin Hill's uh, painting tutorials. Uh, but I have tweaked it a lot. Uh, there is no water in his painting. In this painting, uh, I have put this water and the waterfall at the end. And for the frame, I have just picked it randomly um, online. And for the background, it is uh, also my uh, the stencils I have uh, bought, which I have used for the wallpaper. And the, these two birds are from my brother's uh, pictures. So uh, my wildlife uh, photographer brother, he has clicked these two pics uh, and I'm using these two photographs as reference picture. So uh, for the 
sketch i have used a uh, transfer paper and uh, uh, transfer paper and a white carbon paper so i have used white carbon paper because the background i had was a little bit darker so i couldn't see if i would have used a black carbon paper i couldn't see the uh, actual sketch so i used that and uh, then you can do all of this the transfer and tracing and all that kind of stuff uh, because i have my complete underpainting in acrylic paints uh, and acrylic uh, paints after drying uh, can take all of this uh, and oil uh, it is not true with the oil paints for oil paints you have to be very careful that's why once you block in all of your final design you can then start with oil paints to just like to just get the vibrancy in the colors just get your contrast better your painting ends up looking much much better when you use oil paints uh, i'm not saying that you can't achieve similar results with acrylic paints uh, maybe it's a little bit difficult or maybe it's my personal preference um, to do to paint oil or acrylic i have been switching back and forth between my um, different brushes which we discussed initially uh, and I have put uh, all of the details below in the description so you can always go back and refer to it. If you have any kind of questions in between, um, you can uh, put your comments below. Uh, please do ask me if you have any concerns or questions uh, about any step I'm doing and not explaining it properly, if you think that. Um, once I block in both the birds and the branches and some of the highlights here and there, I am now going over the river portion and the water reflections on the river. Uh, I am using just a, a titanium white uh, liquid basic paint, paint for that uh, and I am just now randomly, actually I don't have any particular reference picture for that and that was actually a big mistake because I ended up correcting this area a lot of times. I think I corrected this area 3 to 4 times. To, to get the end result and actually I'm not even happy with the end result I have achieved and next time I'm I need to follow I need to have a reference picture I can't just um, paint a waterfall out of my imagination that's what I have understood uh, for the next time that's the lesson lesson learned for me actually there are a lot of lessons which I learned from this painting because also for the landscape I didn't have a, have an exact reference picture which made it a little bit difficult for me uh, because I wasn't exactly copying uh, what Kevin Hill has produced in his tutorial and I had to make a lot of changes because my idea was a lot different than what he has already painted in his tutorial. So uh, I'm just trying to define the darker portions. I'm, uh, trying to get the contrast better for the landscape portion of this painting. Um, this week the results we have uh, achieved are just blocking in the design and they are considerably good results. Uh, the main portion in which we will bring that vibrancy to the, this whole, whole entire painting will be done as a part of next week's uh, tutorial. Uh, I have used uh, liquid x basics paints only for the whole acrylic painting and i'm going to put uh, the description in the description all the details whatever colors i have used whatever brushes i have used the kind of canvas i have used from where i have picked it and the um, references to the pictures i have used and how i have created this design i don't use photoshop or anything for creating the designs uh, so this is just actually using photoshop should must be much easier which i should think about from next time and uh, we'll just see this for today's tutorial and next week we'll start with the oil layers and uh, please like this video if you have if you have loved uh, watching it if you have enjoyed it and then uh, please share it with all your friends and uh, all your all the people who are interested in uh, learning how to paint oil or acrylic and I'm going to bring much more exciting videos in future so please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out of, on any of the updates coming from my channel and uh, 
See you on next Thursday with part 2 of this tutorial. Bye bye.